This video tutorial from Focusrite will show you how to set up your Sapphire interface to be used with Steinberg's Cubase software ready to record and playback audio. The first step you need to take is to download the latest version of Sapphire Mix Control from the support pages of the Focusrite website. Once you have done this, you can connect to your Sapphire interface and run the Sapphire Mix Control software. Then open Cubase and create a new project. You'll be greeted to the window like this. To configure your Sapphire, select Devices and go to Device Setup. You then need to select VST Audio System or VST Audio Bay in previous versions of Cubase. Under ASIO Driver, select ASIO Sapphire. When prompted, select Switch. Here you'll see an input and output latency appear and sample rate. This shows that the Sapphire is connected to Cubase. Also on this page, ensure that release driver when application is in background is not ticked, as this will cause you problems if it is. Then click on ASIO Sapphire. Here you will see all available inputs and outputs for your device. You'll notice that there is 16 inputs and eight outputs. However, if you're using a different interface to MyPro40, you'll see more or less inputs. Then click OK. We will then need to configure the input and output buses within Cubase so that they are available to use for each channel. To do this, select Devices and select VSD Connections. You may find that there are already buses here. If there are, delete them as they may cause problems. To do that, select the bus and press delete. We then need to add the buses. Since my Pro 24 has 16 mono inputs, I need to add 8 stereo inputs as each stereo input groups two inputs together. Here you will see that this has added 16 inputs. It will automatically assign the Sapphire and the Sapphire's inputs in order, ready to be used. We then need to do the same for outputs. Click Add Bus after deleting any buses that are there. And since my Sapphire has 8 mono outputs, select 4 stereo outputs and this will group them into pairs of 2. If you forget how many inputs and outputs you need to add, go back to the device setup and look on the ASIO Sapphire page and this will display all inputs and outputs that are available. Again, this has automatically assigned all outputs to the buses that I've just created. Now that I've created the buses, these will be available to select for audio channels. Select the channel and on the left, select input routing. Here we see that we have stereo, 8 stereo pairs of inputs. Under stereo input 1 we will see left and right. This is channel 1 and channel 2. Under stereo in 2 we see left and right and this will be channel 3 and 4 and so on. Select the channel that you wish to use. For output, you'll see 4 pairs of stereo outputs and also left and right. You can either select a pair for a stereo output that you can pan between or select a mono output. I'm going to select stereo out 1 to output on channels 1 and 2 of my sapphire. You'll see that I can pan between them by using the Cubase's pan control. I will then need to configure sapphire mix control to ensure that outputs 1 and 2 from Cubase are coming out of my interface. The door 1 and door 2 in Sapphire Mix Control correspond to outputs 1 and 2 in Cubase. The easiest way to make door 1 and door 2 go to all my outputs is to select routing preset and door tracking. As you can see, now all outputs have door 1 and door 2, including headphones and monitors. If you wish to create a more complex mix, including the door return and some zero latency monitoring, use the mixer at the top. For more information on using this, see the Sapphire Mix Control tutorial on the Focusrite website. 